logarithmic functions and graphs. And so in this set of videos, we're going to be defining what log functions are and, of course, how to graph them. So very first, we might define why we actually need log functions in the first place. So recently, we've been talking about exponents, and we know very simple exponential expressions. If we had 5 to some power is equal to 5, we know very easily that that power is equivalent to 1. If we know 5 to some power is equal to 25, we know that that specific power is 2. And just like 5 to the third is equal to 125, those are very easy to determine. But what if we wanted 5 to a specified value, and we want that solution to come up to be 20? How do we know what this value actually is? Now, we know our solution is going to be in between 1 and 2 because our numbers here are surrounding our specified value. So we know it's got to be most likely a decimal one point something or another. But how do we know exactly what it is? We can do a guess and check method, but of course that might take us quite some time to do it, and I still don't think we would ever get the very precise answer that we're looking for. And the same thing that would happen down here. If we wanted 5 to a value is equal to 60, we know our solution is going to be between 2 and 3. But again, we don't know exactly what power that is. And this is true for any answer that doesn't come out to be an exact specified power. And so that is why we need to define a And so that is why we need to define an inverse function of exponents. We know in math we always have to have opposites, just like the opposite of addition is subtraction, the opposite of multiplication is division, the opposite of powers is square roots. Well, what's going to be the opposite of exponential functions where x is in the power, not just a very specified number in the power? And so the opposite of exponential functions where x is in the power is what a logarithm is. Logarithms are defined as the inverse functions of exponents. And so an easy way to evaluate what a log actually is is to convert it into an exponential equation. So the easiest way for me to help you understand how to compute or simplify logs is always treat it as a question, a question that is in this exponential format right here. Okay, so some stipulations on this. We know that our b, which is defined as the base down here, and the x, which is defined as the argument, have to be positive real numbers. Just for the same reason that in exponents we defined that our exponent has to be a positive number, it's the same thing as definition here. We know our base of the exponential equation has to be a positive number. And because of the range of our exponential functions when we graph them, we know that the range also had to be above zero. So that also had to be a positive real number. Another stipulation is we know that b cannot equal to 1 because, again, if we had 1 to any exponential function, that would always be equal to 1, and then any of these properties here would never apply. So we've already talked about the vocabulary a little bit. The value of y is the actual logarithm, what the log is equal to. b is the base and x is the argument. And we already said that log can always be transformed into exponential form. And so if it's written as a log function, it's defined as logarithm form. And if it's written as an exponential function, it's defined as exponential form. So this is just kind of the definition of log. And so let us define again what it exactly is, and then we're actually going to do some examples where we convert it in between log form and exponential form. Okay. In the last section, we worked on exponents, and in the section before that, we worked on inverse functions. And we've already said that log is defined as the inverse of an exponent. And so we just want to work through this property here just to enforce exactly what I said. So if we wanted to find the inverse of this exponential function here, hopefully recall the steps, the first thing that we would do is we would set it equal to y. So I would have y is equal to b to the x. And then we know to find the inverse, we switch the x's and the y's. 
So I would have x is equal to b to the y. And now we want to figure out, well, how do I isolate this y to solve for this y equation? And again, that is how logarithms defined. So log is defined as y equals the log base b of x. And so basically it's just saying that we're converting between our exponential format and our logarithm format. Okay, so let's see some examples of, again, just this conversion of moving things back and forth. So in each of these examples here, the problem is given as logarithm format, and all we want to do is write it into exponential form. And so I have the definition up here on the right in case you need this reminder. But the thing is to know is that we always take our base to the opposite exponent, and that is equal to the argument of our log. So in this case, we have 2 to the 4th is equal to 16. And so now that's something that we can actually evaluate or check in our minds. Of course, 2 to the 4th is equal to 16. Okay, I did the first example for you. I suggest that you pause the video and do example 2 and 3. And again, all you need to do is convert it into exponential format. Okay. So example number two is our base of 7 to the opposite exponent to the 0 is equal to 1. Of course, it is true because anything to the 0 exponent always simplifies to be 1. Um, example number three, 10 to the opposite exponent, negative 2, is equal to 1 over 100. Now, this one might take a little bit of math to convince ourselves that this is a true equation. But we know that 10 to the negative 2 is 1 over 10 squared. And of course, 1 over 10 squared is equal to 100. So of course, this is a true exponential equation. So the thing to note here is that if you're ever evaluating logs and you cannot do it on your own, treat it as a question. And so the question that you should always be asking yourself should be, is the base to what exponent is equal to this argument over here. Okay, so we've done converting from logs to exponential forms, and now let's go the opposite way. These are given in exponential format, and we need to convert it into log format. And so, again, our base is going to be the base in both places. The Power is going to be what our logarithm is equal to, and then the x is the argument inside the log function. So let me do the first one for you. This is log base b of 3 of 81 is equal to 4. And so we can see that each of my things here are substituted into the correct place when I'm referencing my property up there. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and see if you can do example two and example three on your own. Example two, log base 10 of 1 million is equal to six, is example two. And three is log base one-fifth of five is equal to negative one. So again, in these last few examples, both this slide and the last slide, was purely just writing these back and forth, getting used to switching in between logarithm format and exponential format. Okay, I have one more of these, except for, notice it doesn't give us our actual answers over here like our previous slides did. So we need to figure out what these are actually equivalent to with our own mindset, not utilizing a calculator. So my suggestion to you is to always treat logs as an question, as an exponential question. The base to what power is equal to the number on the inside. So if you need to actually write these out and convert them, that's perfectly fine. Hopefully the more familiar you get with these, the less you actually need to write them out. So in problem number one, I have four to what power is equal to 16. 
And so 4 squared is equal to 16. And so my answer here, log base 4 of 16 is equal to 2. So I did the first example for you. I want you to try and work through the next examples on your own. So pause your video and see what answers you come up with. Okay, number two, again, always treat it as a question. Two to what power is equal to eight? Well, two cubed is equal to eight, so my answer then is three. Log base two of eight is equivalent to three. Um, number three might be getting a little bit more difficult. One half to what power is equal to eight? Well, this kind of piggybacks off of example number two. We know two to the third power is equal to eight. So if I took the reciprocal of that, so if I have one half to the negative third power, that would be the same thing as two to the positive third, and that would be the same thing as eight. So anytime you need to take the reciprocal or flip over your fraction, most likely your exponent's going to have a negative in it. And so in this case, our answer is going to be a negative 3. Log base 1 half of 8 is equal to negative 3. Example number 4, 9 to what power is equal to 3? Well, this one's a little trickier. It might be easier if we went the opposite way. We know 3 squared is equal to 9. So what is 9 to what power is equal to 3? So think backwards here. See? Now, I know it's not going to be negative, just like the last one was, because if I took 9 to the negative power, that would be 1 over 9 squared, and that would give me 1 over 81, which is not close whatsoever. Okay, so I know it has to do something with 2, because 3 squared is equal to 9. So how else can I invert something to give me the right answer? Well, let me invert this fraction. What if I took 9 to the 1 half? How else can I think about that? Well, we know I can rewrite 1 half as a root. So this is the same thing as square root of 9. And of course, the square root of 9 is equal to 3. And so log base 9 of 3 is equal to 1 half. And I will link the video here if you need to remind yourself how to rewrite fraction exponents into root format. Hopefully you found number five really easy. Eight to what power is equal to eight? Well, the obvious answer is one. And then number six, 10 to what power is equal to 0 0.01? Well, let me convert this 0 0.01 into a fraction. That's 1 over 100. And so now hopefully my exponent's a little bit more obvious to you. I know y squared is going to give me 100. And I know y to the negative 2 is going to give me 1 over 100 because it is going to invert or flip or take the reciprocal of my fraction. And so my answer here is negative 2. So this is basically, again, me reminding you that you need to treat all of these as a question, treat it as an exponential question, and maybe this is a good time for you to review how can exponents all be rewritten to look at the different forms of the possibilities that we can have. We know that negatives are going to invert our fractions, or if we wanted to remind ourselves of fractions inside our exponent, we need to recall that those can be rewritten as roots. All right, this is where I'm going to end this video here. And in the next video, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about some specialized logarithm functions.